What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey, and don't judge my hairline. I am not that. ITR Boxing has recently started a channel on OF.TV. Go there and check out some of our exclusive documentaries. I promise, not just as my mom like them, you will too. Good to be Diego Pacheco. Shout out East Ooh. LA, Diego doing his thing. We've been on, Stax had put me up to Diego a while back. Me and Dakota have been big on um, on Diego. Uh, I think that the big thing I see with him is moving away from where he grew up. It, like talking to him before, it seems like there he doesn't want to go into it, but it seems like there were a lot of environmental stressors, people harassing him because he has a little bit of fame. Um I heard a story in one of the buildups where someone threw a brick through his mom's house or something. It feels like Diego feels a bit more free being in Seattle, Washington. And I see when I saw him fight some of his fights, like in Fresno, it looked like something was on his mind while he fought and he was getting hit with dumb shots and he wasn't achieving. It really feels like him moving away from home has allowed him to level up. And to me, he's the prospect of the year albeit it's March, but he's sitting in that spot as the number one prospect in the sport. You know, it took a lot of courage for Diego to do what he did. Um, as far as being with um, TG Boxing, you know, he was with Garcia with um, and being trained by a trainer out here uh, whose last name is Garcia. I forget his first name. Is it Omar? A, yeah, well, Omar was one of the trainers, but it was um, – it was a shark, not not Pablo Shark Rubio, but there's another kid named Sharky that fight. It was a Golden Boy fighter, fought a few times for Golden Pablo, Boy. Pablo, um, it's it's Garcia, but um, his his they actually he left camp. You know, he joined the Benavides camp, and you know, I think that was one of the best moves that he could have done was get away from LA, get away from this environment. I mean, you've been out here plenty of times. You see what the environment's like out here, Luki, and I think for him just to step away from what he knew. And, and to, to have the courage to say, hey, I need to get to that next level. I need I need a better team, you know, and, and the way he handled it, it wasn't over the phone. It wasn't through his parents. It wasn't through a girlfriend. It wasn't through whatever. He basically went up man to man and said, hey, this is what we got to do. And, and, I, and I'm moving on, you know, and it, it was he split with no hard feelings. He did it on a professional level, especially being such a, a young kid, knowing what he needed to continue to have his career you know, to, to move forward. And, and he did that. And it seems like that's the best bet that he could have done, you know? And I want to be, get out of this oh, area. I want to yeah. say before Dakota speaks, if no one's seen that before the bell feature with Jack Cullen, watch it because you see a little bit of the innocent child in him too, because he's showing him the, where he lives. And he's like, and this is my room. I get to be an adult. And you're hearing a 21 year old kid, giddy to have a, like a room in a thing. And I think that, that speaks to what you said, Stax. He gets to be a little bit of not having to worry about environmental stresses. He can just have a house and be happy that he has a house and yeah. walk down. And I think he enjoys not being known. I think that's something that he really likes. And, and I think it's going to improve even more once he does come across a little bit more money and he's able to move his family out of the hood. You know, his, his mom is still there in South Central and whatnot. And it's just like once he's able to to get them out, like he's out, you know, so he's not worried about that. But I'm sure in the back of his mind, you know, he has thoughts of his mom and his, his family going through his head every single day, you know. So I, I think once once you're able to fully focus, as we know, you know, boxing is such a mental sport. Once you're able to focus on on, on everything else except the family life and whatnot, He's, he's going to be even a lot more better than what we're seeing. Dakota? Well, yeah, I mean, just to add to that, I mean, it it, it reminds me, it's a recurring story, but it reminds me of He Got Game, where, you know, the the, the Ray Allen character is going to make it to some college or make it to the league or whatever. And so the whole neighborhood, there, you know, there's so much pressure on that one kid to kind of make it and uplift themselves as like the inspiration, you know, in New York, Stefan Marbury was like that. There's plenty of fighters like that. And I think for somebody at his age to kind of, to know better and to, to get out of that environment. I mean, it speaks to the kind of kid he is. And then to be in there with David Benavidez all the time, I know he's sparring with my guy, Richard Van Sicklin. He's getting all kinds Daniel of Blancas, another high level, tall fighter. He's fighting really good guys. Yeah, he's getting all this really high quality work. And for me, at least, 
I, I think he's the the total package, and it's just sort of a race to the top between him and David Morrell. Rudy Garcia, that's his name, Rudy Garcia. So uh, he has a son named Rudy Garcia. That's a boxer as well. Fought on a few Golden Boy cards, you know. So um, yeah, shout out to Rudy. And like, like I said, there was never no, n- never any hard feelings there, man. I mean, he, you know, both uh, both of them took it. You know, Rudy being the adult that he was, and then Diego being, you know. Stepping up and being a man when he didn't have to be, you know, he could have just bounced and left camp and and did his own thing. But the way everything was handled was handled professionally, and you know what, it's it's turning out for the best for for Diego. You know, Diego's turned into one of my favorite fighters just for the way he conducts himself and from where he comes from. I guess people want us to talk about the fight. Jack Kellen's a very basic fighter. He's very tough. He's a guy I think every one of us respects because he's very limited in terms of skill but he fights his heart out every time. He has a tr- he has more will than probably any fighter out there outside of Gabe Rosado and a few other fighters, but he's extremely limited. He's a guy that spars Callum Smith a lot, and he was basically outgunned in terms of talent. He had to just try to be tough and beat Diego Pacheco. He just couldn't be that tough guy with a young, hungry kid who stops him body shot fourth round. Do we see a world where Diego Pacheco fights Edgar, Edgar Berlanga, or are those two just on different paths in life? I think he's too good, man. Like, you know, I, I think if, if the Berlanga, whoever's on his team is trying to move him a certain kind of way to position him for a huge money fight as soon as possible, that's not the fight to take. I think Diego would take it any day because he's – He's just that good, and he's going to be that really good fighter in that position going, look, I'll fight anybody, and nobody's lining up for the, for that challenge. So I think that's that's the challenge he has ahead of him. Yeah, I could see Diego taking a few more step-up fights before he gets to that, that world level, in which I think that that's the way they are going to move him. Um, I can see him fighting somebody like a, a Jason Quigley next, you know, just a name that's out there um, to – you know, to just to get him some more confidence to get another uh, win under his belt, you know. But I do feel by the beginning of, you know, 2024 that we do see Diego in a, in a big fight at 68. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to continue to see videos like this one, go to OnlyFans.com slash ITR Boxing. We have a ton of content there, and it's really, really easy to see weekly, never-before-seen videos, some editorials in video form. We have a ton of content that's exclusively over there. And two times a month, we're bringing you full-length documentaries or quarter-length, about 15 to 20-minute documentaries for our OnlyFans. So really go check it out and see what all the buzz is about.